<laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Taryn McKenna. I work with uh, Pines. Oops. Um, I'm the Pines Program Manager, which doesn't really tell you anything about what I do. Um, that's fine because I do it uh, most passionate about and interested in is working with the Evergreen community to make Evergreen better. That being said, I only know how to do a tiny bit of a lot on other ways that can help to improve Evergreen. Um, so I just want to say up front today, um, we're not going to be talking about code or how to contribute code um, and help make a better product, even if you don't know code. If you do know code, that's great. And more developers are always needed. Um, so um, I noticed, first of all, so I want to ask um, you to just think about like, how do you feel like you're part of a broader community right now? And do you want to be part of a broader community? Do you want to be us uh, to make this a better product? And I, you don't have to tell me what your answer is, but I hope the answer is yes. Um, and uh, I hope, or the uh, next time you get to meet each other in person, that you have developed relationships with your colleagues at other institutions and, get, and uh, you know, have a, a better bond when you see each other in person next time. So, um, just a little overview. I'm assuming that all of you know what Evergreen is because you're here. Um, <clears throat> but just uh, just a high level overview. Um, Evergreen is an open source. Uh, it was initially rolled out, developed and rolled out by Pines, which is who I work for, uh, in 2006. Uh, it was actually had its roots of Georgia libraries were using ILSs at the time that didn't uh, weren't Y2K compatible. Uh, and um, some of the libraries at the time didn't even have any automated library, About half as many libraries as we have right now. And now we cover most of the state of Georgia. Um, so we have 51 regional library systems, uh, close to 300 libraries that we're supporting. Um, and it's uh, because ILS that we were using could not actually fulfill their claims of what they could do to support a consortium of our size. Uh, it was the decision was made, uh, which was a, a new ILS from scratch and to make it open source so that other libraries in our boat could make use of it as well. And now it's used in multiple languages in various parts of the world. So uh, open source software, it's freely licensed. That does not mean it's really free. It's free like puppies. So I just say that so I have an excuse to show off. Um, he is a handful. Uh, he doesn't always do what I want him to. Uh, and uh, he tends to surprise me sometimes. Um, just like open source, it takes some working, it takes some training. And the more we work together, the better things go. Um, and that's uh, you know my metaphor for the community and contribute and even argue, um, the more we put into it, the more we're going to get out of it. So um, other than code, the main things that we're going to talk about about for ways to contribute are discussions, uh, documentation, and testing. Um, documentation, I hope, is an interest group. Um, that is a nicely established group that has a lot of momentum right now. Um, and if you know how to use the software, or even just one little piece of the soft, then you are have a valuable skill set that you can contribute to the documentation interest group. Um, so even if you know they know much documentation that is out of date, um, and Gina Monty has done a really good job of organizing a big spreadsheet of all the documentation and what needs work. Um, so you, and she will tell you how to contribute. You don't even have to write it in ASCII doc. You can write it in a Word doc or a Google shared doc, and uh, they can convert it for you. Um, some of it. Um, and so people just need to sit and do it. Um, the other thing, um, I hope that all of you are on the Evergreen mailing lists. Um, there is a list of various mailing lists uh, about writing them all down. <laughs> um, but um, the, uh, the Evergreen general mailing list is the one that everybody should be on. And then there's an Evergreen developer mailing list that even if you're not digest mode, just to keep um, an eye on big things, big announcements that are coming up. Those often get copied to the general list as well, but um, and then there's mailing lists for the various interest groups. Um, how many of you are a member of an, of one of the interest groups? Oh, only a couple of you. Okay, so this is great. <laughs> so there are uh, various interest groups. Uh, I would look to the cataloging interest group as like the pinnacle of an interest group. They meet monthly. Um, they are very organized. And they talk about um, various bugs, uh, workflows, processes. Uh, they talk about uh, features that are being developed, and they've actually features. So if you have strong opinions on cataloging or acquisitions or usability, which is a new interest group that's just starting up, um, please, um, I run a new developers working group, um, at which you're welcome to join if you are interested in code as well. 
um, and more. the more members, the better. So there's also uh, the outreach committee. Uh, if you are um, interested in not the software itself so much, but promoting the software. Uh, and if you are more interested in Evergreen from a broader perspective, um, you could consider uh, running for the Evergreen Project Board. Members rotate off, so they're always looking for new people to participate. And they, they manage things like the trademark protection, which hasn't had any issues uh, for a long time, and legal stuff. And they work closely with the outreach committee and that sort of thing. So if you have a more of an administrative mindset from that, from that perspective, then uh, keep that in mind. So it's my love. Um, so uh, how many of you have any idea how changes actually get made to the software? <laughs> okay, so this is the general workflow. Whoops, it's not catching up. There it goes. Okay, so ideally, the people, so first, someone, and this go, this is pretty much the same process for either a bug or a wish list request for any feature. So one person, oh, I wish this grid really had another column that did X. Um, and they report that into Launchpad. Launchpad is the website that I'll show you in a minute, reports and wish list requests uh, for the software and their status and their documentation or discussion. So Joe reports it. Now Kim over report get posted and she in Launchpad and she confirms it. She says, yes, we're seeing this as well. This would be great to get fixed. Confirm. Says, oh, I know how to fix that. So I'm gonna write this little bit of code and submit it to the community. And then Hans over at another institution says, tests it and signs off. I'll talk a little bit more about how you can test if you don't have a test server too. So uh, once a sign off happens, then one of the core committers, and there's only uh, like the last guardian of the code, um, they review the code to make sure it's not like opening up big giant security holes or anything, or it's not in code repository. And then the main code repository right now is called master. That is being changed on June 1st to be called main. So I'm trying to get in the habit of using main instead of master. Um, at the point they add it to main, that means if you are, uh, if you can download, if you have the capacity to download and install your own software, you can download it from there right away. Um, and er periodically there's a group of volunteers that we call the release team um, that changes with every release and they package that up into an install. Any of these points, there could be a lot of back and forth discussion. All of that happens in Launchpad. And so you can go back and look at the history of uh, the discussion. Um, sometimes people will submit a patch and it won't be do it, or somebody else puts in an alternative suggestion, suggested patch, et cetera. So <laughs> Launchpad is at launchpad.net slash evergreen. I would bookmark that. Um, that so you can keep track of where everything happens. And I'm actually gonna open that page. Get the little menus are overlapping my window. So this is Launchpad. Anybody can create an account. Um, I'm already logged in, but you'll go to this page and on the upper right the time on, but there are a few things I want to point out. Um, first, uh, the series of milestones tells you what versions are currently available. Um, in black are the ones 3.10.2 is the most recent release. And then the other ones in black are still being supported. Uh, once they're no longer supported, they drop off of this list. Um, so three, the, the, those are the releases that contain the new features. And then the point releases after those, like 3.10.1, those contain bug fixes that are on top of the, that release. Um, another thing I want to point out, so Launchpad lets us tag bugs um, and it's uh, free text tagging, so you could add any tags. We've done a lot of work to um, streamline the tags if you want, but we encourage people to stick to the tags that are already here just to make the um, various bugs and wish list requests more discoverable by people that are searching through them. Oops. And the other thing I want to point out on this page is up here, there's a subscribe to bug email and it gives you a little box, sorry, my mouse, um, a little box where you can add uh, one subscription or multiple subscriptions uh, just when bugs are uh, added or closed or updated. Um, and you can also filter bugs so that you can say, I only want to get uh, gives me the drop down list of authorized tags. And so if I subscribe to this, I'm gonna get an email every time there's anything added to a bug about holds. So if you're only interested in particular areas, then you could do that. Okay, so my bugs tab, let me make that bigger. 
So the first thing I would do on this page um, as a new user, what I would click on the little gearbox, and that way you can see, you can decide what you want to see. So I like to see the heat, which is how many people have said that it affects them or how important it is that helps prioritize bugs. Um, the bug number is last updated, the status and the tags, but you can show whatever you want. And anything that you click there to show, you can also sort by because it'll add a little sort by button here. So if I want to sort by the oldest bug, so the, um, oh, I didn't put the age on, let me show the age. So if I sort by age, I can see that the newest um, newest one that has been added was two hours ago. And there's one that's been in there for 13 years. <laughs> um, and that there is a total of 2000, um, a lot of, I mean, probably, I don't know what the percentages of wish lists, but a lot of them are wish lists. Uh, probably at least half of them are wish list requests. Many of them means um, either they're difficult to confirm or it could mean that it's really probably a configuration issue on their end and not actually as a development that nobody else really wants. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why it could uh, be unconfirmed. Um, and some of them, we, but we do try really hard to make sure that they're all tagged. Um, so if you sort by tags and do ever any tags yet, they're going to be really hard to discover if they don't have tags. So one of the things that people that are new to this could do that's really valuable of tags and uh, take a look at them and read what they're due. So this is what one actually looks like. You can see who reported it and when. Uh, the status is new, so it hasn't been confirmed yet. Read about what it is. And the good practice, if you're creating Evergreen, you're actually on. So this is saying this bug in Evergreen 3.10. Uh, this is, uh, I haven't looked at this bug yet, so I'm just scanning it real quick. Uh, when a whole data is edited, the activation time. So without getting in too much detail, I know this has to do with holds. So if I start typing holds in the tag, oops, I'll show you what I was doing here. Let me close that. So this little plus button, add tags, sound of the matching tags. Just click on that, check, and you've officially contributed to Evergreen. <laughs> so that, you know, it's not a super high bar, but it's incredibly important. Um, on the main bug search screen, if you scroll down on the right, you'll see the list of various tags. They're sorted by which items have the most uh, or most bugs. So just, you can click on any one of those and uh, take a look at them. So patron has 210. Um, they all have tags already, um, but you can still sort by um, date last updated, age, et cetera. Contribute is to take a look at really old ones and see if they are still relevant. So there may be some in here that are still from the old Zool client, and if they, because they're no, unless you can recreate the same bug in the current client. Um, there's also a big project that Bill Erickson is working on to add, to redo all of the patron interfaces. So the patron edit, check out, check AS. And when that rolls out, we'll need to go through all of these old uh, patron bugs and see if they are still broken in the new version. Also, hopefully we'll get to close out a lot of the old ones. So um, there's a lot of maintenance that goes along with this. Um, that is just a matter of looking at bugs, seeing if it's still there. Uh, look at an old one here. So, uh, okay, this one is usually, this one is 11 years old. Delete user aborts on shared address. So um, if, if that is still a problem um, now, so this was from Evergreen 204. So that if you have access to a test server, and there are some community test servers available um, to test this, if you could confirm that that's still happening on the current interface, down in the bottom, and I would always read through all of the existing comments first. And uh, let's see the most recent, yeah, there hasn't been any activity in a while. So you would just add a comment saying, confirm that this is still a problem in Evergreen 3.10 or whatever version you're on. So again, it's not a huge amount of commitment, do some testing, add a comment, add a tag, um, and it is providing a valuable service to the community. Um, another thing that you can do on these is to add heat. Uh, eight people, does this bug affect you? If you click on that, it will add your heat to it. So there's always a heat value over here, and that you know, it's an indicator of how many people have uh, said that it affects them. So in theory, at least, when somebody is working on deciding what bugs to work on, if they have some spare time to code, they can sort by. The so right now, 
the winner is a wish list request for batch loading record buckets by Bibidi. Yes. <laughs> so, and bump it up even higher. Um, so let's see where I'm at in my slides. So, uh, here we are. Um, so does anybody have any questions about just general Launchpad thing? How many of you have actually logged into Launchpad before? Okay, so all of the rest of you, I'm tasking you all <laughs> to go out and create a Launchpad login through what kind of bugs and wish list requests are actually in there. You know, um, go to an, a topic area of things that of an area that you're interested in, like circulation or reported, so that you're aware of things that other people have already reported. Um, at you may have. Uh, opinions or information that you want to add to an existing as a wish list, and you want to say that's a great idea. How about it also does this? Or um, I disagree with that because that would break my workflow. And somebody creates something that breaks workflow because not everybody is watching it happen. Um, so that break brings me to so that's your task for now. Um, the next thing on any of the Evergreen mailing lists, you've probably seen me send out uh, reminder messages about these, but if you haven't joined the list yet, please do. Um, we, four times a year, they're kind of the same feedback fest is more focused on the next uh, major Evergreen release, getting that all tested to make sure nothing usually to test uh, bug patches that have been submitted that aren't tested yet. Um, of course, all of the other activities that I talked about in Launchpad can also be done during that week is May 8 to 12, which is the week after next. Um, you don't have to participate the whole week. <laughs> if you have half an hour or an hour and uh, do something, anything, if you're adding a comment, if you're confirming a bug, if you're adding heat to something, all of that counts. And you get you an ex example of a chart from last time. So the bug squashing week um, page. It's a long page. Sorry, there's a lot of information here. Um, it, this page, uh, it tells when the next bug squashing weeks are planned. Um, and it gives you kind of an overview of squashing. And then there's more information. Um, if you are able to test a proposed bug fix or a new feature and sign off on it, it has instructions for doing sign off. If you know how to use Git, you can do your sign off through Git but that's not required. You can actually just add a comment in a particular format that says, let me make that bigger, um, with my name and email address. And that uh, lowers the requirements so that anybody uh, who, is, who is not familiar with Git does not, not and sign off on things. So there's instructions on that. Um, you can go back and look at previous bug squash days if you want to see examples of what people have done. The last one, we as a community were able to sign off on this. Uh, 36 of them were committed by the core committers to the main code. Um, 18 new bug reports were filed because sometimes people kind of have things niggling. Up, um, and so they do that. And a lot of, there's always a lot of just discussion. So other feedback could be adding tags, adding heat, confirming bugs, marking bugs uh, that are already fixed or that be added to the participant list and see your name up there in lights. Um, you can also take a look at the worksheet that we used during that week. So for the next uh, bug request or bug squashes, we have several different volunteers, um, usually me and Tiffany from my organization and Jason Boyer and Galen Charlton and servers, and we'll load uh, various features and bug fixes onto those test servers with a set of generic test data. So having your own test server or anything like that. Um, you can just test the features on those for sign off purposes. Um, so there'll be a list like this. I categorize them bug. I know that's hard to read from there. Um, and then the status, whether it's ready to test or it's needs more work or whatever. There's also, whoops, ah, I don't know what I did. Look, me and touchpads are not friends. Okay. Um, so up at the top, let's see if I can zoom a little bit. Nope. Um, up at top, uh, if you haven't worked with it, of different logins that are already set up at different staff levels and patron levels. So when you're testing something like a CERC feature, you want to make sure you test it as a CERC person or as a manager or as an admin. Um, there's also and a list of new bugs that need to be reviewed and confirmed. And then if you scroll down, you'll see that was one test server and you'll see 
That one had a lot of stuff. So, okay. So any questions about bug squashing? Am I going to see y'all in there? <laughs> okay. If Michelle will be there. Anybody else? Who, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Who else? Who's going to be a bug? Let me see. That's mostly what I had to talk about. Let's see what else. Okay. Questions? Uh huh. It follows, it really follows the same um, pattern as the bug requests. So um, once someone, uh, let me think, it depends on how big it is for one thing. Like if it's a little thing like adding a column or a field to something, um, a lot of times that's just kind of gonna go through. Um, you know, one of the reasons we have people from different organizations um, submitting and testing things. So if I have a wish list, it's probably not gonna go through unless at least one other institution agrees that that should be in there. Wish list and then sign off on it myself <laughs> unless uh, unless somebody else has you know, confirmed it or, or added uh, additional. And you certainly can't sign off on your own development work. Um, that's a big no-no because somebody else really needs to look at your code um, so that we eliminate code as we can before they get in. Um, now, as far as really big, like whole new modules, um, that's usually a much bigger deal. Um, and a lot of that, it's more dependent on funding than it's willing to cough up the money to actually pay for the, that development. Um, you know, it still should go through rigorous community testing because any new feature shouldn't, we need to make sure you're using it as well. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, a lot of that does boil down to funding. So it's again, free like puppies. Like it's, yes, anybody can do it. Yeah, by hire, hiring another outside developer to do it. Um, there aren't very many things I've ever seen that were developed that were just rejected. Um, if you break anything, <laughs> then it usually ends up getting in. Um, sometimes you kind of have to drum up community support for it and do a little bit of, you know, uh, marketing. Um, I, you know, the interest groups, I think is the best way. Um, the, here's the yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, even if you're not a cataloger, they work because they are so good at focusing on uh, prioritizing things and talking about how they want them to work and working on something, they invite them in and talk to them. And, you know, like when Bill was working on the holdings editor um, for Angular, uh, you know, the catalogers are <laughs> interested and they had a lot of opinions <laughs> and he listened to them. You know, he, he listened to uh, what they had to say um, a lot. You know, it, every, they do things one way and they just kind of forget that everybody else does things in a different way. Um, so the more you can work with people from other institutions and figure out what works for worked on and get in. Anybody else? Uh -huh. So is the bug squashing an activity of like the developer interest group or is it all? That it's everyone, developers. Um, and then we uh, like er early in when I started, I've been in the Evergreen community for 10 years. Uh, I worked at, a, at an evergreen using library for four years before, but when I started, when I came to Pines 10 years ago, um, we were just doing one day bug squashing things. And so everybody kind of like, it was just mostly just some developers that were like, oh yeah, we should pull more time. And I've worked really hard um, since I started coordinating it of trying to get more everybody involved. So, um, you know, sometimes the interest groups, okay, during bug squashing week, we're going to make sure that one of the people with a test server gets these patches installed so we can test them um, and or that or just saying, okay, these we test before the end of the week while they're still up on a test server. Um, and that can be done with anybody. Um, you know, we um, try really hard for when, when something's ready to test, it gets up the test servers, try really hard to get all of those up onto a test server to get tested. Um, sometimes there's conflicts between different patches um, and sometimes, but if there's one that you really want to test that has a pull request, um, feel free to reach out to me or or um, on the list on one of the lists or anything. We'll make sure we get it on there. As far but as far as testing, um, we can do that for sure. Okay. Anything else? Well, thank you, everybody. I think it should be break time now. Okay.